My name is Adam. I'm a cinematographer, and I'm inspired by nature. Being outdoors and active makes me feel the most alive. I believe in taking chances and living life by design. I travel full time with my two best friends, and I probably never would have had this life if our trip to Ireland hadn't gotten canceled. But the morning we were supposed to fly in, Ireland looked more like this. Get inside and stay inside. A nationwide red alert as Storm Emma meets the beast from the east on this once in a generation weather event. We didn't make it to Ireland that week, but that was the week that changed my life. But to tell you that story, I have to tell you this one first. Every great story starts with a girl. Her name is Destiny, and she is smart and kind, she is beautiful, she is fun and adventurous. She wanted to travel the world or live in a van, and I was hooked. All through high school and college, I had this dream of owning a Volkswagen van one day. I just always had this itch to go and see places. I grew up in a military family, so I've been fortunate enough to have been able to start traveling since I was young. After being exposed to more of the world through my own travels, I started to notice a theme among different communities of people around the globe. There is this experiences and relationships over possessions mentality that leaves people filled with so much life and joy. I wanted this to be something that we put at the core of our lives. So we went to see the world, and we decided we never wanted to stop. So we used the money from the canceled Ireland trip, and bought a bus, and named it Legome, which is Swedish for the perfect amount, and we spent the better part of a year converting this into a house. We believe that we are always in a state of becoming, of growing and learning, finding new and fresh perspectives. And although we have sold our home, we do not consider ourselves homeless, but borderless. We are not confined to four walls and a yard, but instead have adopted an even bigger yard, one that we cannot wait to explore. We also picked up this guy right before we hit the road full time. So this is our story, the story of how we are becoming borderless. So one of the most common questions we get when we travel on the bus is, how do you afford to travel? I mean, like, you just travel around and live in a bus and drive from place to place? Well, yeah, and the answer is really quite simple. We own our own company. Ta-da! <laughs> answer riddle solved. Yes, we have our own photography and video company, and we actually book globally, which is really cool. So Very the cool. bus takes us across the nation, and then we actually take flights and we get to go work elsewhere too. On the jet plane. But nothing short of a blast too. We love it so much. It is a blast getting to travel <laughs> with your best friends, getting to do work that you love doing. Another super common question we get is, how did you guys get the courage to build a house? Because even though it's tiny, it is still a house. And we are not carpenters, we are not plumbers, and we are not electricians. And our house had all of that. <laughs> In fact, <laughs> We are none of those things. I am a film major, and she is uh, an official science nerd. Well, I actually have my Master of Science in Environmental Studies, but that's besides the point. So giving you a little bit of backstory about this, um, we bought a house when we were dating. Now, I bought the house, and I didn't tell her, don't ever do that. It wasn't a cute surprise either. <laughs> So after we bought the house, we spent the next two years renovating. We used online resources such as Pinterest and YouTube, and we had friends and family that would come in and help out, and um, basically a lot, a lot, a lot of trial and error. A Kinda. lot. Let's <laughs> emphasize that. A lot. So basically we spent two years learning, building, renovating our house. It was a two bedroom, two bath. Um, we took it from really really bad to really really nice and that kind of gave us a trial run if you will for building our very own tiny house in a bus So we 
began the process of building our tiny house. We had a four month plan from start to finish. It was cool, it was fun, it was this big creative project. But then four months came and went. Five months, six months, seven months, and eight. We became discouraged and exhausted, but we kept chipping away at this dream. Slowly and eventually, it started to take shape. By month 11, the bus was still not complete and we were burnt out. So we sold our house anyways and we moved into the bus full time. To give you more of an insight on how we felt, I give you a short history lesson. In the year 1519, Cortez landed in Mexico. After several hard months at sea, he arrived with a weary crew, anxious for the return voyage home. Cortez did not give a motivational speech or a pep talk to raise the men's spirits. Instead, he ordered the men, burn the ships. Everybody told us that the first year of marriage would be the hardest. We have always had a really good relationship and marriage has been very fun for us. Our hard part of our first year of marriage was the bus build. It is the hardest thing we have ever done. We felt stuck and we felt like we were never going to get out of there and everything was two steps forward and one step back or two steps forward and three steps back. It was a long hard year and that's when our burn the ships moment came. We decided to sell the house and move into a bus that was only 95% complete. So we hit the road and landed in Georgia for a tiny house festival. We made lots of good friends and got some great advice from people who we like to say are living out in the wild. After that, we kept going south. To escape the cold, we went to hang out in Florida for a couple weeks. Florida was warm and amazing and peaceful until Brew showed up. can't be tired already. Okay, nope, not tired. Our first couple weeks in the bus were a total learning curve, but it didn't matter. We were just happy to be doing it. We were doing the thing that we had worked so hard for. We finally felt unstuck. We had achieved the lifestyle that we had worked so hard to create for ourselves. Florida was amazing. New adventures every day. We started to feel invincible, so we got brave and went boondocking off-grid. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> Tell everybody what your suggestion is. My suggestion was that our bus can't go in sand. Adam is an optimist. And then we do what Adam wants to do. And then we end up like killing half a day because of situations like this. And then you can edit and like, you know, cut to where they see that we're stuck in the sand. So my wife was absolutely correct. We are stuck in the sand. It was my decision to pull off the side of this road here. And see, is just gonna help dig us out. <laughs> Keep going, dude. Is it digging? Of course. <laughs> yeah, we thought we were super cool last night, pulling in, boondocking down the side of this road. It was super cool. Woke up this morning all alone which is great until you get stuck in the sand. Now who are you gonna call? It's not like I can just wave somebody down. They don't have like a tow kit big enough. And we don't have cell phone signal out here either, so. <laughs> Figure it out, I guess.
<laughs> He's not helping. There he goes. <laughs> He's just really helping you. It's cute. As you can see, uh, forward reverse, forward reverse actually got me farther away from the road. Um, I attempted to dig out, um, but as you can see, this is all pretty good loose sand. So, we called a record service, and then we called another one because they didn't have the tools big enough to get us out. Uh, we called a third one, and they have the equipment to get us, you know, the 50 feet it takes to get to the road, but they're not available until tomorrow. So, uh, until then, we are going to go use these wonderful mopeds and try and go find some shovels and start digging our way out. And then worst case scenario, we don't make it out and they come pick us up tomorrow. Hopefully that is worst case scenario. It's not a good sign. So as you can see, it's almost sunset, and I promised my beautiful wife that we would be out of this hole, out of this ditch by sunset. So this is what we've been able to accomplish. And um, we've dug all of this, and we've let air out of the tires. So now it is time to drive 50 feet to the road, and then we're home free. We did it. We are out of the hole. We dug all day. The sun is going down, but I promised her that we'd be out by sunset. It is time to celebrate with the signature backflip. Ta-da! All right, gang, we are doing it. Our first official meal outside. Bruce chewing on the bone. Destiny's cooking. I'm vlogging. Destiny, where are we? We are at Juniper Springs in Ocala National Forest. And what did we do today? We did a photography workshop. Um, it was like a styled elopement shoot, and we had two sets of couples, so it was really cool. We actually got to meet photographers from all over the U.S. That's right. We did make really cool connections and we took some super rad photos. Which we'll show you right now. Uh, or after yesterday's um, adventures of boondocking, we decided that we would just do a campground at night. Uh, so far, I'm digging the amenities. We have a picnic table and a fire pit and concrete to drive away on. Pretty excited about that. No chance of getting stuck.
great, but similar to our hometown, Florida is filled with historical coastal towns right on the beach. We love the beach and we can't wait to go back. We can't wait till Brew is big enough to swim in the ocean by himself. But for us, we want to see something new. We can't wait to see rolling hills and mountaintops and deserts and valleys, someplace new to get stuck and then unstuck. We can't wait to see where life takes us. Well, welcome to Becoming Borderless and our bus tour of Lagome. Let's go. Let's do this. Let's see, we got custom wooden grill here with LED lights. Um, moving on, we have custom lighting up there. This was the first thing that we built, which was a bifold door. And then we, um, we put a seam on it down the middle and trimmed it with wood. Make sure that there's a handle spot for it to go in and now we have a single use door then we put our simple ladder on the outside of our big uh, handicap door and then that takes you up to the top deck we have the trunk and in the trunk we keep our generator our fuel any tools that we need and then our mini split tell them how we learned the hard way to keep the extra fuel <laughs> When you run out of gas and then you're like, hey, we need extra fuel. We painted it ourselves and uh, we did all the woodworking ourselves. Yeah, it was just, it was a, a really fun experience. Come on, let me show you inside. Adam did all the woodworking. <laughs> let me clarify that. Um, but we actually redid our stairs and it extends our floor plan and kind of makes it a little bit easier to step in because originally it just went straight back right here. So it was like cut out this way and it, we made it hard for some people to get into our bus so we went ahead and extended the floor plan it just gave it like a creative look to make it feel like more like a home make sure you take your shoes off before you come in <laughs> so first i'm going to show you guys how we have like a front porch area this huge door that this ladder is ex that this ladder is attached to actually opens so it opens and when it's closed it's really nice because it's like an extension of our kitchen and this is actually fold up fold down countertop so that's really nice extra countertop space anytime we had a space we would just like hey let's throw on like baskets on the walls or extra storage and cabinets because you need a lot of storage and a little space and this is our kitchen um, we actually made these countertops well we had help from a friend actually help us uh, put the countertops together with the epoxy and everything, but it is made from uh, little pieces of, what kind of wood do we use on here? Uh, hickory. hickory. Yeah, so it's made from hickory wood that we stained different stains. Um, and then this is my favorite, probably one of my favorite features of our bus is our induction cooktop. It actually runs off magnets and it's connected to our solar system. So I just cook all of our meals off of the sun's energy. And it's just, it's awesome. I just totally nerd out about it. And it's really cool because this pops out of place so I can just go and cook outside like on a bench or wherever we are outside a picnic table at a campground and it's really nice and it just plugs in and and it cooks phenomenally too it uh, boils water faster than a regular cooktop does too so I'm very impressed by it and I would not go any other route aside from this if I had the choice <laughs> These are our closets. So we have a hidden and hurt closet area. Super cool, super convenient. Um, pretty good amount of space, I would say too. Like we fit a good amount of clothes in there. Um, we've got like an upper shelf, a bunch of um, place to put shoes on the bottom too and hanging racks as well. And then of course I got this. Every woman needs a full length mirror. Okay, so then we moving on. This is our bathroom. This door was actually built by Destiny. It's an old barn door that we got off Craigslist and then the leftover scrap wood from our countertops. She painted, stained, and then cut and designed this beautiful barn, uh, bar sliding barn door. And then we put it on tracks so that we can open this up and then you can see inside of our bathroom. Nothing fancy, it's just a glorified bucket under there. Um, 
We are able to take the shower outside though, outside the window. We have done an outdoor shower, which is really nice. We more so use this as an emergency shower. Absolutely. Um, we take a lot of showers at the gyms and whatnot, and it works out pretty conveniently for us. So we haven't really had to use it much. All right, in this closet, we have our, this is where our table lives. So table goes here and here. And this just kind of keeps the floor plan a little bit open so we don't have to always have the table on a permanent setup. But it is nice when we need either workspace or eating food. Um, these benches have storage underneath and our dashboard, we built everything up front. And then that's the mini split. That's the inside version that's blowing all the cold air. And it does keep it really cool and warm in here because we have a pretty small bus. We have our fridge. <laughs> I forgot about that. Again, we had a space up here. We're like, hey, let's make it storage. So we have like cleaning supplies and whatnot up here too. Keep a lot of our cleaning supplies down here as well as our hot water heater and everything else is actually mounted underneath here. And then this is a little nice thing. When we have the dog with us, we put the bowls in here and it's just like slide in and slide out dog bowls. So that's really cool. This is really cool. This is actually our entire pull-out pantry. Ooh. Our bed is on hydraulics, so I can just lift it up, and it's nothing but a mass amount of storage underneath as well. This is actually a full-size bed, but we sleep, we're pretty tiny people, so we sleep really comfortably in this, and we have a bunch of pillows that actually extend it a little bit, so we don't have a problem like not fitting up here, even if our dog's up here. Um, we're totally comfortable with it. We've got like a bookshelf up here, extra storage because we had the space. Um, we've got like hanging baskets in here. Oh yeah, our ceilings are cool. We actually um, installed our ceilings. Yep. Our, it took about a couple days to do that. That was really cool, um, which we like. We decided not to keep the original ceilings, but we have about an inch and a half of insulation on the ceilings, the walls, and the floor. Yep. We used foam boards as well as Reflectix, and we used spray foam to fill in the gaps. So we're really heavily insulated, which that was really important for us. Yep. Um, and I, I would say it's paid off. And the floors? Yes, our floors are actually on our diagonal, which we really only did for aesthetics. <laughs> Adam's mom did it in her house, and we're like, hey, we're going to steal that idea, and we really like it. So, yeah. All right, gang. So, if you have any questions, comments, um, hit us up. Yeah. Thanks for... Welcome to our crib. <laughs> Thanks for coming. Peace. Bye. Join us next time for our first trip out west for a little bit of work and a lot of exploring.